Hi, I'm Jeremy Wheeler, uh, and welcome to my exhibition, Soft Collections. Um, I am the marketing manager at the A2AC. That means that I do uh, everything from uh, social media posts to advertising, graphic design, all that kind of fun stuff. What you might not know is that I've been a local artist for uh, over 20 years now. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, while I made a name for myself with like poster design, graphic design, branding, I designed Vault of Midnight's branding, Lo-Fi's branding, designed that like cool neon dragon. Um, in the last three years, I've uh, really found a lot of joy in making watercolor. And this show, Soft Collections, this show, Soft Collections, is uh, the culmination of the last three years of doing watercolor. Do, 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 do. And uh, let me get that straight. All right, great. Um, and so uh, what's funny is that I actually started painting watercolor because of these free art resource videos that we were making at the beginning of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, as soon as I was posting them, I was just like, hey, I think I could do those. And sure enough, you know, like it took a long time. I mean, watercolor is a weird, chaotic medium, but um, but I really kind of took took to it. And, you know, as far as uh, styles go, um, you know, I'm I'm mostly known for uh, really stark contrast work, really like bright pop colors and uh, a lot of blacks and stuff. And I found that with watercolors, I was like going to the absolute other end of the spectrum and really enjoying it. And one of the things that I really enjoyed starting to do was to create um, portraiture. And, you know, one thing about me is that I, you know, I love pop culture. Uh, I've worked in record stores, I've worked in video stores. Um, and uh, I was a DJ for a long time. And so, you know, my subject matter absolutely, um, you know, parrots all the things that I'm, I'm into and all the things that I've been doing on a professional level for a long time now. So, um, so with that, I thought I'd give you a little uh, paint tutorial, a little paint session. How about that? Um, and I am going to, uh, I'll tie it in with how I learned watercolor to begin with, uh, or what initially drew me, uh, other than those art resource videos. So give me a second as I change my screen. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. We have my, my brushes here. Here's a uh, palette, simple palette, keep it simple. Um, so the interesting thing about, uh, the thing that I knew uh, that made me know that I could do watercolor was that I was really into ink washes and ink washes were set up very much the same way where like you would have a pool of ink here and then multiple pools of water. And then you add in, um, varying degrees of ink to give yourself like a, you know, uh, a gradient. So, but what I really didn't know that you could do was you could do it with watercolor. So I'm going to mix up, this will be like the darkest one. And really I'm just eyeballing it right now. And since this is a watercolor palette, a lot of this, like previous palette stuff will um, be re-energized by water, which is really great because that's a big difference between watercolor and ink is that ink is permanent. And watercolor, you can still zhuzh watercolor when it goes down, even when you're dealing with blacks. So let's see where these colors are at, where these hues are at. So here's my darkest, here's a little test sheet that I have here. Darkest, lightest. Boom, I think that looks pretty good. I think that like a little, this one could be like a little bit darker. It could all be like a little bit darker, but here's the thing, we're gonna be like, um, we're going to be uh, layering these colors anyway. So, um, 
you know, the, the thing that you want to do with watercolor, at least the thing that I like to do with watercolor is go from lightest to darkest. Um, so here's how I'm going to apply that for you today. Today's subject is uh, the last year's uh, best uh, underdog story, comeback story is Kihui Kwan, who just won the Academy Award for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, people uh, my age and you know other uh, cinephiles will know um, him from uh, Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, as well as Goonies. He was in Encino Man, along with like the other Academy Award winner, Brendan Fraser. Um, he's just such a, like a feel good, great guy, so enthusiastic. But one of the things I really loved about Everything Everywhere All at Once is um, how it also displayed his kind of like suave side. And, you know, it's a it's a direct hearkening back to like Wong Kar Wai movies and, uh, you know, In the Mood for Love and stuff. And actually, um, Key was an assistant director on uh, one of Wong's uh, follow up movies to that. So he has like a direct lineage to that. So I thought I'd uh, paint a little fancy uh, portrait of him. Uh, so I have everything penciled out. I do very light pencils. Uh, one thing about watercolors, you want to keep your pencils light. Um, showing pencils through, it can totally work, but um, uh, but I like to keep it all pretty light because my paintings end up being pretty light. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take from like a super light um, hue and I'm just like, going to go in and I'm just going to start laying in some of that light gray. And I'd love to say that I did a, uh, you know, a test of this before, um, but uh, I have not. So I'm really hoping that I can uh, do this in time. I believe, if you believe, clap your hands. All right. I heard a couple of you to do it. Um, so, uh, so here I am. I'm just kind of like laying in some like light, light uh, colors. Sorry if the uh, camera shakes. I'll try not to do that. So I'm just like laying in some like light gray colors. You know, one of the reasons that I chose this photo reference from Variety was that, um, you know, it had a very strong light source. And honestly, I figured that that would help with just like even just timing of trying to get this done in the time allotted. So, so we're going to start as some light, light colors. Go in here. Uh, if you haven't done watercolor before, um, there's always time to try. Uh, we usually always offer some watercolor classes here at the A2AC. Um, and it's very well worth your time because uh, I, I find this medium to be pretty surprising. It, it can be very chaotic, um, but the results are are really kind of inspiring in the fact of, you know, you can do something and work on it and then pretty soon you're just like, oh man, I did that. How cool. Um, you know, there are pieces in this show that I think are the best pieces that I've ever painted. And, you know, it's all kind of due to just practice over the last few years. And so even when you like come to this show, if you take a look at the signatures on these pieces, you can actually see a progression going on from 2021 to 2023. And I'll say that the ones from 2023 are some of my favorite works. All right, so we're going to um, move uh, from the second lightest to the third lightest or the third darkest, however you see it. Um, now I'm going to throw in some of this, as you see. It's getting darker. Here's the thing about watercolor is that like you really want to keep these wet areas moving to get 
a, um, a clean wash. I think people struggle with clean washes. I sure did. Um, but, uh, but as long as you kind of keep the color moving, then, um, then it will dry in pretty nice, uh, smooth gradients. Um, another big thing is, you know, choose the right brush for what you want. Um, that's another uh, real good tip. And even then I'm, I might be using like a little bit bigger of a brush than I need, but I'm pretty comfortable with this brush and it holds a lot of like ink. Another thing you can do is, you know, I have a towel right here, so you can kind of wipe off um, the watercolor that you're painting and uh, to, you know, kind of get a little bit of a dry brush technique. So you can kind of blend some of these colors a little bit better, especially when you have these like uh, dry areas that you've already painted. Just go in. Kind of go around, making sure I'm good time-wise. If you make a mistake with watercolor, you can often, uh, you know, get a clean brush and uh, dab it with some water, and uh, then kind of, you know, work work it out over the area and you'll find that it will uh, take up some of that unwanted uh, paint. So I'm just kind of moving my way around this face. Um, and, uh, you know, filling in this uh, filling in um, this like mid range of color, or actually black and white. But who's counting? So like there, yeah, that works. Uh, so Kihu Kwan uh, was really really interesting story uh, to him because he, um, you know, he started in Temple of Doom and uh, the Goonies. And, uh, you know, for people like me, you grew up with them, you know, always loved him, always wondered what happened to him. He was an Encino man and then things work really dried up for him. Um, he really uh, came in contact with like a, a lot of I mean, Hollywood just wasn't at the place where they were hiring a lot of um, Asian Americans. And so uh, so he went back to school and he got a film degree. And then he started working on stunt teams, um, teaming up with uh, Corey Yoon, who is a famous uh, stunt coordinator, um, director, um, and, um, he actually worked on the first X-Men, which is crazy. There's like footage of him working with Hugh Jackman and Hugh Jackman's, um, like stunt double, um, which is really interesting. And, you know, there's the, you know, the sad part of it is, is that he had to change his name. He had a Jonathan do his name to try and get himself, uh, work and it really didn't happen. And, um, it was only after crazy rich Asians that he decided to try and uh, make a go of it again with acting. And so shortly after he saw that, he kind of put himself out there again. And next thing you know, he had a script in front of him for everything everywhere all at once. And uh, the rest, as they say, is kind of history. He, uh, he has cleaned up this award season, winning just about every award you can, and including Best Supporting Actor at the Academy Awards. 
uh, Harrison Ford gave them the award and it was incredibly endearing to see them together. Um, so getting back to the painting, as you can see, um, I've moved to another dark hue. And I'm just trying to keep things going, keep it wet, putting in some highlights where I can. Try not to shake the camera, sorry about that. So again, I'm just kind of moving around. I, I find that it helps if you can kind of you know, compartmentalize your brain and say, okay, I need to keep up with this area. I need to keep up with this area and just keep things wet and keep things going. As it is, it's gonna be a line there, but I'm gonna be okay with it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just deciding, I'm just deciding it's cool. Okay, um, let me show you. I work pretty small. This paper is uh, 140 pound watercolor greeting card paper. So this is uh, taped down, but when I untape it, you can kind of fold, you can totally fold it and then send it as a card. Uh, I've done this for holiday cards the last couple of years. And uh, yeah, I just think it's like a really nice way of like keeping in touch with people. But for like some of this area, even though this is a small, um, small canvas, got a little hair there. Even though this is a small canvas, um, these are kind of like big areas, and you could do it with this, with this brush. But it's a little harder. What you want is something like this. We call this a mop brush, and uh, unfortunately, this is like the smallest I have. But um this is the best way to lay in big areas of wash and so i'm gonna do this side first because as i'm working over here i don't want to like smudge it over here but i'll show you what it looks like let me get this mop brush wet as you see it went from a fan to like being very um solid so i am going to go in I'm gonna move to my second darkest. And I'm just gonna start laying it in. I wanna make sure that the tape that I put down here is solid. Let's just lay it in. Again, check out all those edges. Don't let those edges dry. Important. What you can do is so I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to switch to my other brush. I'm going to kind of go in and do some details on it. That was medium there, so I got a clean brush to kind of pick up some of that water. Now you see that it pools. It's pooling down here, which is normal because if you're uh, not on like really heavy watercolor paper or mixed media paper, you're going to have some um, warping happen, which is fine. So I just pick up a little bit of that. There may be a highlight that ends up there, but that's fine you'll see that it will dry pretty smoothly. Um, there may be some like weird artifacts going in there with the paper, um, which is fine. Um, it all matters on how, what you want out of it. Now you can see it's crawling back up in here. So I'm just cleaning my brush and Picking that up a little bit. You can also do something like this. Get your towel, pick it up too. So look at that. Really, it's already drying. Really nice, clean wash up here. Really nice, clean wash. Very much um, 
a thing that's desired out of watercolor. So I am going to switch brushes. Let's go to, let's go to this buddy, a little, little round brush. And I'm going to start putting in some black detailed areas. Like these glasses. You'll notice if you, if you see some of my watercolor work um, that eyes are very much my uh, the focal point that I try and stick to with my art. Sometimes glasses can be a little bit of a hindrance because, you know, they have to be so, most times glasses are so dark that with your focal point, you end up having to do like glasses and eyes. Um, and so you kind of, with, with me, I've had to, uh, switch up my game a little bit when it comes to the glasses, but I also paint pretty intuitively. So, um, so, you know, I just kind of make it up as I go along and the more that you paint, the more that you end up, uh, getting a grasp at, you know, how it should work. So now I'm going to start going over some of my previous washes, creating some of this depth. How are we doing on time? Perfect. So just creating some depth. It's got some great lips. I was also drawn to this image because it like it really had some like strong, you know, chiseled kind of features. Just kind of going over here. Got some highlights in here. So be a little light. Let me go over these eyes. Now I've got smaller brushes that I am going to utilize to really put in some of the darkest. Uh, details, but this is good for right now. It's such an expressive face, um, you know, his, you know, jubilant selfies have been the, uh, you know, the toast of the town. But I, like I said, I really love these, you know, contemplative, um, Suave pictures of him. And there's that whole part of the movie where he's um, in Everything Everywhere All at Once, where he just does play this incredibly suave um, version of himself, of his character. And it's just so good to see. Uh, he seems like such a genuine guy. Um, And I'm really looking forward to what he does next. Okay, so like I have a little bit of a hard edge. I just wetted down my um, paint. I'm just gonna go in here and soften that up. Soften it up. Uh, now look at the, um, look at how the wash uh, dried. Really, really nice, really, really clean. Uh, it, it took me a long time to real to figure out how to do the best kind of washes. But um, as soon as I found as soon, you know, you can go on YouTube, you can take a class with us by all means, but you can also go on YouTube and uh, check out some watercolor tutorials. And there's a lot out there that um, you can get a lot out of. So uh, I am going to switch back to my other brush, my bigger brush. I'm going to go back in and lay down some additional some additional colors. I'm 
and I'm making a little bit of a little bit of shadow. Things I missed the first time. It's too dark. And yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because people don't really use watercolor um, for grayscale like this too much, which is really interesting. Um, it ends up, you know, it can end up with like this bit of a, like a charcoal uh, look to it. And uh, yeah, I find that very fascinating. Actually, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that people um, kind of consider what watercolor art is. And I think what I've found is that the more you kind of box it in, um, the more it just kind of repels it. And, you know, it really is all about how you approach it. Shadowing a mist here and here, not too dark. When you're dealing with colors, a lot of times uh, watercolor colors will uh, dry a lot lighter than you think that they're going to. But um, I found that you have to be a little bit more careful with black and white, this kind of grayscale version of what we're, what I'm attempting here. Again, I'm keeping things pretty light in general. It's one of the reasons that my show is called Soft Collections. It's because, um, you know, it's just that soft aesthetic. And if you're wondering if I'm going to fill this in, yes, I will. Uh, I might save that to the very end. I think right now I'm going to move to the darkest setting. Really, there should be kind of an in-between point, but considering our time situation, I am just going to dive in. Uh, here I got a little short liner brush. Uh, this compared to you know the big round that I've been using, you can see the difference. Uh, this little short brush I use a lot for ooh, some flakes in my ink. Um, this I really use for going into these dark areas. I think I'm going to water it down just a little bit, add in a little bit more water. That's one way that you can lighten up the paint that you're using. And it uh, looks like I missed a little bit of the glasses. So um, I'm just going to add that in. There you go. Always be checking your references. Make sure it's good. Let's go to this one. And with the way that I work, I am just fine with um, the focal point being the darkest part of it. Again, in this case, 
since he's got glasses on. We're just gonna have to live with it and go in and get those glasses harder too. I mean, you could just make it that way. Um, but I, I'm just gonna darken up the glasses. I won't use the same like precious black. And I probably will go over those eyes again, just to make them even more dark. I definitely want these glasses and the eyebrows to be darker than they are. So let's do this. Hmm. Looking not so bad. Okay. Let's add a little bit more dark highlights in here. Using that tiny brush. Actually, okay, yeah. No, not bad, not bad, not bad, Wheeler. Really. Um, and one thing that you like know, uh, one thing that you can do is just knowing that you have these like darker areas, if they start getting too dark, then you can just kind of go in and add more colors or more, you know, depth to them. So let me go back in here. Let's go to the third lightest, third darkest again. And we're just going to darken up some of this so that um, so that we can get more of that depth in there. I really like these lines and those his forehead again he's got just such a great expressive face and some of that seems a little too harsh so let's pick it up a little bit as you can see you can pick up some of the paint it's all good add more that shadow in here i want these eyes to really pop so let's make sure that the eyes are more outlined in there. Now, once I put in this, uh, this and this um, colors, it's really going to make the, the white stand out. So I think that right now it's feeling uh, a little too soft, but the plan is to fix it, basically to lock it in. Let's get some of these. Lines in here. A little bit more dark into here. Get just a little bit more shade in there. Now I am going to do some outlining. What I find with outlining is that it really does bring things out. I need to rest my hand on my uh, drawing board, so sorry if it 
gets a little shaky. So my, my goal isn't really to be photorealistic. There's always a graphic sense in what I do. And, you know, chalk that up to graphic design, um, chalk that up to being, you know, a, uh, a lifelong comic book, avid comic book reader. Um, some people know me from some of my uh, comic work from back in the day. Again, like I said, um, you know, I designed Vault of Midnight's branding. I did their uh, their mural with like the big, uh, with the big Godzilla creature in Grand Rapids or no, in Ann Arbor. So I'm kind of going around. And it's really kind of shaping his face quite nicely. I'll probably make this outline a little bit lighter than that. Just keep getting a little bit lighter. A little bit darker. Really want to get some of this chunked out. I ended up going going dark anyway. That's fine. So let's. Simple outlines over the wash. Nice, 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 nice. That works. Let me uh, darken up these lips here. Got nice chiseled lips, some good hard edges. Which especially if you're going for a uh, a graphic look. Good. I think now I am going to go in with my mop brush and add some color. I'm going to try and make this a little lighter than the other side. Going with the uh, Where the light's coming from. Maybe you can see, you can kind of move it around. There's a lot of wetness here, so you can kind of play with that. As soon as it gets dark, that's when your, or as soon as it starts drying up, that's when your options are a little bit more limited. That works pretty good. And as hopefully you can see, as soon as I laid that in, his face um, jumped out a little bit more. Um, but that's going to take a little bit to uh, dry. So I am going to work away from that. Usually I try and kind of work my way around the painting. And if uh, something is drying, then I'll work on something somewhere else. I'm going to darken up. I'm going to continue to darken up these eyes. along with the glasses. And I'm actually gonna start, I'm gonna throw in some shade over here to make its face pop out more. Again, just following the light source. If anyone has any questions, I uh, you can put them in the chat. Um, I will get back to them. This is all done. Um, 
and I'll be sharing this afterwards on like YouTube, on like Facebook and other social media channels. And uh, you can also ask questions in the comments and stuff. And, you know, I will be sure and get to them. Now, right here, I'm just going to go over all of this because I didn't really like how that looked. Firm that up. Now I'm going to get a little bit more over here. Blend this down. Just have like a wet brush now. So I'm just kind of blending it in. There will probably be some remnant of a uh, of a line, but that's all right. I can deal. A little bit to the sweater underneath. Pick it up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more to his hair over here. Just make it give it a little bit dark. Just plopping in some grays over here. Again, we're talking like focal points. So I really want your eye to come down here. And actually, I miss a little hair down here. So I have that. So once I've added that in, your eye really gets kind of like drawn to it and stops. Um, something I really love about um, just like playing with contrast. And now I'm just kind of like feathering that in. I may go in here, add a little bit of darkness just to make his other side of his face stand out a little bit more. I think actually I can go in and add the same thing over here. I think it'll be stronger this way. Best to have, uh, you know, uh, Susan Mankowski, one of our uh, watercolor teachers, you know, she made the great point of just dealing with uh, contrast. And even if you're painting in colors, um, you can take a picture of your work and continue a little bit. You can take a picture of your work and edit it and turn the saturation down and see what it looks like in black and white because uh, that's actually the best way to see if you have, you know, balanced contrast. So I am going to, what time are we at? Man, almost done. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add in a little bit of gouache white paint because I find that things really come alive when you add white highlights. So I'm going to wet that down. Now it's going to pull some of this, you know, black that's already on this part of the um, palette, but that's all right. This is way more white than I need, but I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to get it done. So go back to my short liner. Um, I'm going to add in some little highlights. That one, two. I am Daria. Uh, and let's add in a little bit more darkness. Uh-huh, I am. I'm doing it live. 
Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, Kihu Kwan. Uh -huh. He uh, just won the Academy Award. Really? Yeah, for everything, everywhere, all at yeah, once. Right. Yeah. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, it's a. Yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Uh, just push. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Daria White Pike, Pike, um, uh, one of our instructors, uh, long, long running ceramics instructors. We love her dearly. Um, okay, so I am really close to being done for this session. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some highlights over here. And just completing this, just kind of doing a little bit more suggestion. Again, I'm not at all concerned about being photorealistic. And is there any other white spots? Do some little white spots here. Whoops. Another dot over here. Right there. And I'm going to call this one done. So I just need to put in my signature. That is that, a portrait done just about on time. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. And even if you're joining later for this pre-recorded, uh, for the talk after it's been recorded, uh, thanks for checking it out. Please join me on Friday, March 17th from 5 to 8 p.m. from an opening reception of uh, Soft Collections. You can check out all the pieces that are for sale online in our shop, um, shop.a2ac.org. And um, yeah, my show is up through uh, March 20... 28th. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you at the Art Center soon. I hope to see you at the reception. Um, the reception is at the same time on Friday as the opening reception for the Ann Arbor Film Festival's Off the Screen um, exhibition. It's really cool. Uh, it's uh, interactive. Um, bring the kids. I think that they'll get a kick out of uh, soft collections and they might get a kick out of some of the stuff with the Film Fest and uh, yeah, that's just about it. Thanks for joining me. I'll get to your questions after this, if there are any. And that's it. Have a, uh, have a great day, everyone. If you want to check out some of our art classes, just go to annarborartcenter.org and go to the education section. Um, you can see all of our upcoming spring term classes. And, um, you know, once, uh, once that's done, you know, we're going to have a, a whole line of summer classes after that. Uh, we have workshops happening all the time, and um, as well as free programming like these opening receptions, as well as um, the Ann Arbor Film Festival's uh, uh, two Play Lab uh, free family drop-ins that are happening. You do have to register for them, so just check out the events section of our website for all of that. And with that, I am done. Thank you so much. This has been Jeremy Wheeler, and uh, have a great day. Bye.